Hi everyone, it's Arthur here at Arthur Ease Your Mind on YouTube and ArthurEaseYourMind.com. I am an intuitive consultant and psychic advisor. And as always, thank you, thank you, thank you for all the likes, the shares, and subscribers. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, why not? It's free. Let's see if I can get 10,000 by the end of the year. Anyway, moving on and saying and speaking of thank yous. I did receive a couple of cute little things, surprises. One was this little book called Bentwing. It's about a little boy who raises a butterfly with his mother. And it's a true story. It's about my client, Christine. And she has raised many, many butterflies since then. And also she sent along this cute little quartz heart. Isn't that adorable? She says she buys them by the box from a woman in Brooklyn and then hands them out to put smiles on people's faces. And she said, the older women really like it. I'm not an older woman, but I really like it. Thank you. And it's on my desk. So also it's Valentine's day this week. No, I'm not wearing red. I walk around with a red face because I'm embarrassed half the time. So why bother? But as your Valentine from me, people have asked me, what am I going to do memberships? It's going up this week. I promise that I can guarantee. Um, it's, uh, probably, I don't know if it's going to be on, on Tuesday Valentine, or Wednesday, Valentine's day, but it's going to get up there. So bear with me. It will be there. And just check out like the comments in my community page. Okay. It'll be there. Also speaking of community pages, we did have a 4.6 earthquake this week and, uh, got a lot of people. Are you all right? Are you all right? Are you all right? I'm fine. A 4.6 in Los Angeles is kind of like. Something like that. I'm just kidding. Because, I mean, they do rattle you. But, you know, it's the long ones that start rolling. You get scared about. But this wasn't like that. In fact, a friend said it was eight miles deep off of Malibu coast. So, there you go. My phone number's in Malibu. I am not. Anyway, but it's funny enough. I was at the store last Monday. And on Aries, I'm an impulse buyer. And I picked this up museum putty and I actually used it on my lamps and on a jade vase I have and some other things and a couple of days later the earthquake hits nothing moved I mean nothing moved it was kind of like okay insert celebrity's name here just put in celebrity's name it was like they had so much Botox in their face nothing moved that's what it was like okay so check that out in my community page Anyway, I did a question from Marianne. Glad you're okay. What is causing all the earthquakes? Florida, Hawaii, and California. One report stated the largest solar flare ever recorded is responsible for this activity. Thank you. I don't know if it was caused by the solar flare. I'll be honest with you. But all I have been picking up psychically for the last several months is we are going through a planetary shift. And I believe this is all part of it. And besides that, the plates are always moving always it's just sometimes we don't feel it okay so i'm not seeing the big one i mean i do have an earthquake kit bag ready so if they tell me to bolt out of town i will and if i don't they don't tell me to bolt out of town and there's an earthquake i just know manny mo and jack does not like me anymore so but i don't see that i don't see that happening okay now moving on i did get a lot of notes about <clears throat> what happened with Special Counsel Robert Hur, and the man, the meaning things he said about Joe Biden when he released his report about Joe Biden having classified documents. Now, Martha Spielman, will the special counsel who wrote such demeaning things about Biden have to face any consequences for going so far outside the scope of his assignment? And then Sweetie Darling Lulu writes, Hey, Arthur, what was special counsel her doing was he performing for 45 to be the next ag after what he did to biden well robert her was a former u.s attorney for maryland appointed by you know who and so was this a trial run for him possibly but it's not going to go anywhere I don't think he did himself any favors. And psychically, I'm not feeling his career 
He's, he may have a career, but I don't feel it's like going to be like, you know, top notch. And then Anne Louise asked regarding this report, will A.G. Garland have any stern messages from Biden for allowing her to release such an unprofessional report to the public? Also, Chris asks, my question is, why did Garland do what he did? I'd really like to know because it feels like a betrayal. I can't forget the last minute business in 2016 from Comey that swung the election for Trump. This age thing, the New York Times has a headline about how it affects Biden more than Trump. What the heck is going on? Thanks so much. Well, when I look at this as a layperson, but then also when I look at it as a psychic, A.G. Garland was in a tough place. If he had edited one comma, one period, erased one T being crossed on this report, what do you think would have happened? All hell would have broken loose from the Republicans saying it was a cover-up. Number one. Number two, Biden, he's told him, did nothing wrong. He was, if you want to say, he was innocent, he was innocent. But I honestly feel Garland was in a hard place because he didn't want to be the next Bill Barr who did what he did with the Mueller report, basically rewrote it and whitewashed. So by releasing it the way it was written, even though he didn't approve of it morally, he did not want to come. He says he's transparent. He doesn't want to come across as political in any way, shape or form. So that's why it was released the way it was. So, but don't feel he betrayed Biden. I feel he did not. He just had to make a decision. He made it and it's done. But it's going to blow up in Robert Hur's face, not A.G. Garland. Okay. That's the way you have to look at it. So, and speaking of Biden, we've got some questions. Uh, Sven Venka, I tell you, I always feel like a high school substitute teacher when I say names. Sven Venka, hello, Arthur. Who do you see as the nominees for president if you don't see Trump or Biden making it to the election? Greetings from Berlin, Germany. Du bin wie ein Stimmblümer. Or how it said, that's the only thing I know how to say in German. That and sauerkraut. Um, well, and I probably get hit for saying it to the wrong person. Um, I'm not going to, the question doesn't need to be answered because I see Biden as making it to the election day and winning. And that goes hand in hand with this other question from Carol Cote. Uh, Arthur, love your shows. Thank you. Will Biden win the electoral count as well as the popular vote in November election? Yes. He, I'm saying he's going to win. He's got to win. So there you go. Then Corey Moore asks, not sure if I'm too late for this question in. Got it in time. I've been wondering if the Biden campaign will ever promote the idea or do campaign ads that President Biden has a team of brilliant, competent professionals in his administration, i.e. Buttigieg, versus the sycophant incompetent grifters that citizen loser might put in position of power. Well, if you've noticed, Biden has taken the gloves off. The recent ads in a couple of weeks have been just about Trump babbling on and doing what he does and just showing how demented he is without having to say anything, but in Trump's own words. So I think that's a class act and very crafty. Don't forget he's a Scorpio. Also, I do, and I've been saying as we get to April, May, June, the gloves are off. They're not going to be so. They're going to be nasty, but they're also going to remind people of what they've done in the past, what they're doing now, and what they plan to do for the American people, as opposed to citizen Trump, who is promising to seek revenge on the American people he don't like. I do speak English, doesn't like. But anyway, so that's what that's about. And DRC 1989 asks, Hello, Arthur, will voters turn out to vote for Biden because they are tired of the cheap shots and nasty behavior Republicans are directing at him and his family? 
believe me it's going to be more than that sweetheart really it's more like this little thing called roe versus way equal rights because let's face it i think it was indiana that just erased trans people from existence they don't exist anymore in indiana apparently and um it's the people that are going to vote from their hearts that they know things have to change and go back better than what they used to be all right and as i've been saying 2025 things get better okay and but you have to vote this is the importance this is where i'm always saying and i'm sorry i'm getting on my soapbox so i just grew about three inches that you have to vote 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 why because you're going to vote like your life depends on it because in some cases it does so please don't just sit back and think everybody else will vote for you and you don't have to well if you let everybody else vote for you you lose you do it it's like there's a saying that if you sleep through democracy you wake up to a dictatorship okay so no sleeping on the job here. Go vote. And speaking of voting, um, Mary asks, who will win the New York seat that George Santos held? Thanks. Well, actually, that special election, that's this week, February 13th. And voters in New York, I have to read, voters in New York's third dis congressional district will decide who will compete the remaining complete the remaining 11 months of George Sanders's unfinished term in the special election. Now, who's running for it? One is Maisie Phillips, Phillips, Republican, a Nassau County legislator who grew up in Ethiopia, emigrated to Israel, and served as the Israeli Defense Forces in the Israeli Defense Forces, a registered Democrat for over 10 years, but then was elected as a GOP Nassau County legislator in 2021 flipping a Democratic seat. And also running is Congressman Tom Swozy. I don't know how to pronounce it. It's S-O-U-Z-Z-I. -Z Swozy, a former Democratic congressman who originally held the seat for three terms. But then he gave it up when he wanted to run for governor of New York. He lost. And now he wants his job back. So who's going to win? It's going to be a tight race. I predict there's going to be a recount. But I do feel that Swozy, the Democrat, sneaks in or squeaks in. Not sneaks in. That'd be a Republican. No, he squeaks in right under the wire. Okay? Now, lots of questions about a man named Tucker. Who named rhymes with a word I can't use because they would send me into YouTube jail, as Mel calls it. But the word fire truck has all the letters. Um, Jorm, what will be the overall outcome of Tucker fiasco with Pudi? Is there more than what meets the eye in that clown show? Any undercurrents to be aware of? And then also Donna asks, will Tucker Carlson be held in one of these foreign countries because one of the dictators didn't like what he asked? He thinks he's Barbara Walters. We know he's not. In fact, someone sent me a meme uh, of his face, Tucker Carlson's face, right next to Curly from the Three Stooges. Exact same expression, exact same face. Just had to shave his head. They look the same. Just saying. But anyway, I think this is his jump the shark moment. I really, really do. And I mean, let's face it, every, he's been fired by all the other places. This is not going to help his career at all. Maybe if he gets a job in Russia, but even they were supposedly making fun of him. However, top members of the European Parliament were really upset about this. And they said he was assisting war criminal Russian dictator Vladimir Putin. And in a Newsweek article, the European Parliament, one mentioned, 
Remember that Putin is not just the president of an aggressive country. He is wanted by the International Criminal Court and accused of genocide and war crimes. Plus another added, Carlson wants to give a platform to someone accused of crimes and genocide. This is wrong. If Putin has something to say, he needs to say it in front of the International Criminal Court. At the same time, Carlson is not being a real journalist since he has clearly expressed his sympathy for Russia and Putin and has constantly disparaged Ukraine. And another one adds, is no longer a newsman, but a propagandist for the most heinous regime on European soil and the one which is most dangerous to our peace and security. So for so much propaganda for a criminal regime, you can end up on the list of sanctions. So he didn't do himself any favors. Well, he thinks he did, but he didn't. If he did, it's for a small group of people. And also psychically, he did it for the money. And he's not a newscaster. I mean, during the lawsuits against Fox, it came out that he, he exaggerates. He, they know that he exaggerates, doesn't tell the truth. And he's considered entertainment. Okay? Well, so am I. Entertainment purposes only. <sighs> but speaking of entertainment, Julie Darling, 3366 asks, as 45 is a malignant narcissist who loves no one, he probably has never considered his demise. Others have, I'm sure. He has written a will. Or has he written a will? I can't imagine him ever leaving anything to anyone, including his devil's spawn. Thank you, Arthur, for your insight. Wonderful insights. You're welcome. Well, yes, there's, there's a will. Of course there is. Just like psychically i've always picked up many years ago that there's a file in a desk drawer that says divorce they just have not been signed yet and uh as far as the will i feel they paid somebody to write it he probably like overlooked a little bit but he is a micromanager but i still don't feel you know it is what it is it'll be like a template i hope tiffany gets something entertainment purposes only now there was a question regarding will jack smith be able to finally remove canon from the documents case after her ruling that names can be redacted now if you don't know trump wants to know who the people they talked about him are and so he wants their names released but these people that he wants their names released to public to the public are sources witnesses some of them are he wants to know the fbi agents names he also wants to know the fbi code names and code words and stuff he should not be privy to or no one's privy to it never goes into public record but canon who we think sides with trump a bit wants it all released so jack smith did write his rebuttal basically and said okay you need to keep these things redacted, quiet. They can't be released. And if you decide to ignore this, I'll be going to this 11th court, appellate court. And we know how they feel about Judge Cannon. They already versed her twice. And three times? I've been saying for some time that I felt her demise would come in February. And I feel by the end of February... If she's still not on the court, we'll know she's going to be removed. All right? Cal Surprise. And then somebody else asked, will Jack Smith ever charge the Donald with insurrection at any time soon? No, he's not going to charge him for insurrection. He got, he hasn't, insurrection is not an easy thing to always prove. However, what he, the four counts that he has against Trump, they're basically, you know, done free. They're, 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 they're there. And so why go for one that's kind of iffy when you have other ones that, you know, are going to go through? So I don't see him being charged with insurrection. But other things, yes. And speaking of that, do you think the Jan 6 court case or any other criminal cases will happen before the election 
Or if so, who will be indicted? Well, first of all, we all know that January 6th is on hold with Judge Chuckin. Now, she's waiting for the Supreme Court to come out with their finding on does he have presidential immunity infinitum. And I keep on feeling they might not take it. They may just take it back to the, the appellate court and say, you know, we, we're not going to believe it. But if they do take it, I don't see them upholding and saying he has presidential immunity infinitum. That every president can do whatever they want, murder whoever they want, do whatever they want as the president, and even years afterwards, not be charged for it. I don't see that. So I do feel that the Jan 6 case, I, at first I always felt March, 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 but then I realized that March 25th is a Stormy Daniels case starts. It's in March. However, I still want to say that Chutkin will have a date on the books by the end of March when this is going to be. And I feel it's going to be spring, maybe late spring, but it's going to be enough time to have the trial, have a verdict, have a conviction before the election. Also, Bonnie Willis, her, the RICO case is in August. I don't see that being delayed. All right. So, and also the Alan Bragg waiting for Judge Engron, Arthur Engron, to release what he has to say about the fraud in the civil case. And then the civil case will go to criminal case. So there's a lot of things going here. And I'm predicting the outcome of what he's going to have to pay is close to $480 million, number one. Number two, I feel he will get his licenses or whatever it is revoked. He will not be able to be an officer or sell real estate, anything with real estate. He won't be able to do anything in New York. And I feel his sons, they, there'll be a, um, I feel five years before they can do anything in New York. Okay. So yeah, there's going to be some stuff going down. Now I get a question here. Will we see a number of GOP either convicted or at least indicted prior to the election? If so, how will that affect the election? Well, and also Wendy Valentine, sorry. Uh, when will Mike Johnson, Elise Stetnik, and MTG, my childhood girlfriend, and Gates leave so tired of their toxic stupidity and constant lies and do nothing for the American people? Vote blue. Thank you, Wendy. Well, the thing is, I've been saying after the first quarter, some names are going to start coming out. Now, I always felt that it was after the trial starts with Trump on, on Jan 6th that names would start being released. I still feel some names are going to be released, whether it's going to be at the end of the first quarter. But I still feel it's going to correspond right after the Jan 6th trial starts. A lot of people are going to be named. And what's surprising is no one's going to be surprised when the names come out. Okay. So vote blue. Um, will Kavanaugh, Coney Barrett, and Gorsuch be asked to step down from the Supreme Court when Trump is found to be illegitimate president? Well, the Senate voted for them. So I don't know how that would work, but. I've always seen one justice leaving before the election due to health reasons, entertainment purposes only, CT. And then I said in the next five years, we will have 13 Supreme Court justices due to the fact there are 13 appellate courts. Okay? So that's the way I see that one. I did ask, get some questions about Ukraine, especially like Oh, I'm not going to say, Jay Shaham one. What do you get for Ukraine? Will they get U.S. aid this spring? 
Are Ukraine special ops and partisan action taking a toll on Russian resources and infrastructure in occupied areas in Russia itself? How many young Russian men have, must sacrifice in Putin's for Putin? Will Russian soldiers drop their guns at some point and walk back to Russia? Well, unfortunately, they haven't dropped their guns and walked back because they, they're afraid they'd kill their families. But also, I'm looking at the big picture. I'm looking at the end result. And I've always seen the end result being in two years, NATO reaches out to the Ukraine and Ukraine becomes part of NATO in two years. All right. So to get there, we got to work backwards. So the details of how it's going to happen, sometimes we don't need to know. Just know that it's going to. I equate it to being on top of a mountain and off in the distance, you see Oz. And then you look down, and there's the yellow brick road. Right, the yellow brick road is supposed to teach us lessons. But what I'm seeing as a psychic is the final result. I'm just going, I'm going to get in a balloon and go to Oz. Okay, that makes sense. Aline Robichaud, will the U.S. become a major player in brokering a deal in Israel-Palestine conflict? Conflict, yes. But what I feel is going to be more quiet than people know, not under the table, just quiet, not clandestine, just quiet. And I feel that comes out in two years. But there's a lot of moving pieces here. And then I'm asked, read on Gaza war, which way is it heading? Well, they always say it's darkest before the dawn. And I do feel Netanyahu is going to be removed. I feel June, July. If he's not removed at that time, we're going to know there's something going on and some things will be tense around him. So you may have to step down. And in the end, will there ever be eternal peace? We can only pray for that. And that's why I always say, send out as much love, white light, purple light, pink light, whatever it is, to every nook and cranny on this planet. Because we, as you know, we're going through a planetary shift, and this helps. All right? Humanly Kronos asks, do you see anything positive or uplifting coming for the country this spring? Yes, I do. At the moment, everything seems dark. Everything seems like it's an endless cycle of hideous people. But what I also say is April 8th is the eclipse. Now, before the eclipse, everything is dark. Dark, dark, dark. Negative. And then I find it fascinating that it's over Texas. And then let there be light. As I always tease, it's a big C major chord by Haydn to represent the sun. And let there be light. And it's going to be like when we have a full moon, everything gets illuminated. But this is going to be like a gazillion times brighter. All right? So this is when the cockroaches start scurrying under the refrigerator. This is when names start being released. This is when people start getting indicted. This is when all that wonderful stuff starts hitting the fan. So, yeah, I feel it's good for the country. It's going to be difficult. You got to wear a seatbelt. There still will be hurricanes. There's still being tornadoes. It's not Armageddon. It's just life. However, you're going to start seeing... Speaking of the Wizard of Oz, you know that there's a little song that keeps playing in my head, We're Out of the Woods, you know, the little munchkin singing. It's kind of like that. So keep the faith. Again, it's up to you to vote. It's up to you to send out white light, positive light, whatever it is you do to every nook and cranny. And I promise we'll get through this together. All right. I'm sorry it's been a month since my last show. Little things got in the way, like a computer crashing and some recovery of data or data. 
wouldn't that be a cool wasn't that a cool name of a episode from star trek generation with brent spiner recovering data just saying anyway also someone said do you give readings i'm like yeah i do so i do give personal readings so if you'd like a, a consult with me just go to my website arthur ease your and there's a button that says book an appointment okay so in the meantime as i always say take care of yourselves take care of others have fun and above all stay amazing bye-bye <laughs>